the stories that matter closer to home. This is Inside Out East Midlands. First tonight, are our children in danger of being radicalised by a new breed of sophisticated online extremists? The internet is becoming a fertile recruiting ground for all sorts of extremist views, not just Islamic terrorism. But is enough being done to tackle this threat? Well, Suleiman Nagdi, a community leader in the East Midlands and an advisor on extremism to governments here and abroad, has his own ideas on how we can fight back. Allahumma azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhilla al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa ansur ibadaka al-mujahideen al-muwahideen Because I'm sort of sitting here reading about, you know, the latest music charts or something and, you know, all of a sudden I've got sort of watched this video, new ISIS beheading. They're there online, they're actively looking for people, they're easy to come across, easy to find. A terrorist, he cannot be Muslim, who goes and kills people. Islam means peace, period. The government's focus is on dealing with political Islam, but most of the threat in the European Union, let alone in the East Midlands, does not come from political Islam. Violent extremism is the greatest threat that we are facing today as a nation. I am Suleiman Nagdi, a community activist of 30 years in the city of Leicester. I have advised governments both locally and internationally on counter-terrorism issues. My greatest fear is more and more young people are being groomed online by terrorist organizations. In the last few days, we've been hearing that Rahul Amin, one of the two men killed by an RAF drone strike in Syria, was radicalized in Leicester. The suggestion is it happened behind closed doors, not at mosques. This isn't an ISIS video. It's a recruitment film for the US Marines. But the terrorists are copying these techniques and mixing them with computer warfare games. This is actually pretty impressive in terms of uh, marketing and in terms of uh, thrill and adventure. Definitely give it um, a very high number. And in some cases, it's actually better than military recruitment videos. It really personalizes it more for the young person because it's almost like you're actually playing the game, that the game has come alive. Jahan Mahmood is a military expert and a former government advisor. Um, this is a reproduction assault rifle. He has a small arsenal of replica and decommissioned weapons. He uses them to teach young people the realities of war. These young people don't realize if they take a bullet in the spine, they'll never be walking again. Many of them go over thinking they'll take a bullet they'll die and they'll be accepted into heaven. But they haven't thought through the actual consequences of combat injuries. Twitter, Facebook, they're the ones that most people will recognize. They'll put their messages out through social media. People will respond, almost like a fishing expedition. And once the process of radicalization starts, we're really into the realms of grooming. Um, and the process is very, very similar. Building trust, building rapport, building relationship over time, not necessarily putting yourself forward as who you really are at that stage, just trying to get into their confidence and then start to drip the ideology piece by piece in. I've been on Twitter so many times and on Facebook and I've seen spam accounts or people who've been hacked and have um, pop-ups that come up whilst I'm trying to read articles and stuff. And I think it's really disturbing because I'm sort of sitting here reading about, you know, the latest music charts or something. And, you know, all, all of a sudden I've got sort of um, watched this video, new ISIS beheading, and, you know, it's not really something that I want to look at. Half of the people who get recruited by ISIS are because, uh, going there because they think they're on a moral crusade, whilst the other half are going on some sort of clue jihad where you've seen the, the latest ISIS propaganda has been using things like Call of Duty. Thousands of our young people have seen the propaganda, but how many take the next step? Two brothers from Leicester who are studying medicine are thought to have gone to Syria after ISIS called for doctors and surgeons to help them. The police admit others from the region may have gone too, but are reluctant to give exact numbers. Anybody who goes out to Syria is going to experience some pretty horrific things. They're going to be living in a war zone. 
and we're concerned that people who have done that, who may have been involved in fighting or seen fighting, if they come back to the UK they are going to be desensitised uh, and they're probably going to pose a bigger risk to our communities when they return, simply because of what they've been exposed to. So, we heard about all the challenges that we're facing as a community. The question is, what are we going to do about it? I feel one way forward is to work together. We need help from members of the public. The threat is real, but what's being done in Derbyshire, the Prevent team is leafleting shoppers. Do you want to take a leaflet? Prevent is the government's main response, a programme aimed at the police working closely with communities. In certain areas of Derbyshire, there are pockets of individuals who have got far right and extreme views, and we want to target individuals like that who may cause harm to members of the community. Folks, if we're thinking prevent, we really should be thinking grooming. That process At a Lincolnshire school, teachers are being briefed on their new responsibilities under prevent. From now on, it's a legal requirement for them to report pupils showing signs of becoming involved with extremist ideology. She always looks sad. Why is that group giving you trouble? At a Dali Abbey, school children and students have put together their own video. MVP! MVP! Warning their fellow youngsters of the dangers of extremism. Everyone's involved in Facebook, chat rooms and things like that. In and it was just went from there to obviously just someone reaching out, someone to talk to, shoulder to cry on. Then it becomes a grooming process and getting involved in the wrong kind of things. But I'm well aware that not everyone is happy. In the Muslim community, some say we've been spied on and free speech is being closed down. Dr. Rizwan Sabir is an academic who specializes in counter-terrorism and he's seen it at first hand. He was arrested while studying terrorism in Nottingham University for downloading an Al-Qaeda training manual from an American government website. He since won damages and an apology from the police. There is a fear within Muslim communities throughout the UK that they are being spied and surveilled by the police and security services, and that's a very legitimate fear that they have. Issues that need to be spoken about will go underground, where they can fester, group dynamics can take place, and they can really prosper without any kind of challenge or resistance or dissent. The government has defined the threat coming from a number of groups, including the far right, environmental activists, and we've got political activists generally, as well as political Islam, but most of the threat does not come from political Islam. It comes from uh, far right and nationalist and secular movements. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا At Friday prayers at the Old B and Wixton Mosque, worshippers tell me that all sectors of society need to reach out to understand each other. We accept the fact that many of the occurrences do involve Muslims, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all, we're all human beings and really the true teachings of Islam are about peace. And I think that's really important to understand. Pick up the Quran, the Quran says, you kill one human being, you've killed the entire humanity. It's wrong. And I request the media not to call these people Islamists. They got nothing to do with Islam. But even here, extremism casts its shadow. The two young brothers who have disappeared worship at this mosque. There is some kind of brainwash. Uh, and if you would see, it is only targeted to youngsters who still, their brains are developing. And uh, we have to, our community, we need to get together and think about this. Whether you're a Christian, or a Muslim, a person of a different faith or of none. It is important to understand that violent extremism affects us all. We have a danger of losing a whole generation of people. We are in this fight together. Solomon Nagdi with his views on how to tackle radicalization. Thank you very much. I think I've used up the 10 minutes of my 15 minutes allocated for this particular section. The reason I think that this kind of uh, interview is important is to illustrate to people that there are many views in regards to this particular agenda of violent extremism. There is no one single pathway for people to follow. My experience working with many young people in secure training centers and those that I've mentored, the number one factor that always comes up, which by no way should justify violent extremism, is always the number one is foreign policy. 
It always seems to appear on top of the agenda. Now, for no reason can we ever accept that as to be a justification for it, but we need to recognize that there needs to be a debate held about this particular issue. The second part that we need to look at is we talk about the Muslim community. Who is the Muslim community? A community of communities that come from different parts of the world with different life journeys, and therefore they react to situations differently. So within the United Kingdom, do we go back possibly 8th century, at the time of King Mercia, when Islam first touched the shores of Great Britain? Do we go back 300 years at the time of the Merchant Navy, when people went to cities like Cardiff, Liverpool, etc.? Or around the 50s, when the first migrants came for the Industrial Revolution? The 70s, when people came from twice migrants from mandated territories in Africa that I came from, southern Central Africa? Or recently, people that came from Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan? Everybody has a different journey. Everybody has a different way of looking at the world. For those that came in much earlier, 50, 60 years ago, are part and parcel of the established community of the country where they are. But those that came in recent years are people that have been traumatized as a result of war from the part of the world that they've come from. What we tend to do always is we try to create a situation whereby we have an answer for the whole Muslim community, a blanket cover, to say this is the only way forward to tackle violent extremism. And I say it's far more complicated than simply sound bites that we tend to take all of the time. And the responsibility does not fall in the so-called so many specialists in counterterrorism that have sprung up. A whole industry has sprung up as a result of that. And there are many people who promote a particular idea simply because it is there to be helpful in relation to fiscal uh, issues around the individual organization. So we need to be mindful about that. The community themselves come from different parts of the world, as I've explained, and their experiences is something that they carry with the rest of their lives with them. So if there's something that had happened thousands of miles away, because we live in a global village now where everything is localized very quickly, within minutes, possibly within two or three minutes, of images of war, of destruction in other parts of the world can come very quickly onto a mobile phone, a picture that one can pick up immediately, and this is the world that we are living in. From the 1990s, after the Bosnian War and the 24-7 media world we lived in, we now notice that the world has come into our bedroom very, very quickly. People that actually do venture into extremist websites, and I have met some of them, has been evidenced through a report by the Home Office Select Committee in the United Kingdom, where it says roots of, radicali roots of radicalization, the single biggest threat they find is the internet. Now, I'm not saying for a second that the internet is the only, but to be denial to say that it is not playing its part. It's playing a very important role in this. So we need to understand. The second thing we need to also look at is the issue about language and how we demonize a whole community by demonizing people continuously and with a press that is of a negative nature will create a siege mentality, a mentality where people will become inward looking, look for support from within themselves. What we need to do is to empower and to create the situation whereby people can be fully fledged members of the society they live in, be it within the civic society of the country they live in or whether in the wider, whether in the political sphere of the life that we lead. That is so crucial within the work that we do in relation to this. If we do not speak to those young people and we do not have our own interpretations of why we think they are doing things wrong, then we have a serious problem. It does not matter. It may make difficult reading, but I think we must, and it is imperative that we hear. It does not necessarily mean we justify what they do. You can never justify acts of terrorism, but we need to try and understand what is going through the minds of some young people. If you look at Islam itself, we say that it has to do with po political Islam as, a, as an example. Then the question we need to ask ourselves is acts of terrorism in relation to suicide bombing that we have noticed over the last 12, 15 years. What happened to the timeline prior to that? So Islam had been there for the 1400 years. From 1400 years all the way up to the last 15 years, you hardly ever had a situation of suicide bombing. What has brought, what has changed? Is it that the people that followed the faith of Islam for all those years were wrong and all of a sudden a few ideologists who come through with their own ideas come through in the forefront in the last 15 years and bring this forward? 
This is a question we need to ask ourselves. So it's very, very important that we understand that there is no one single reason why people go down. What is the straw that breaks a camel's back? It's something I think we need to understand. I believe my time is up because I've been signaled already. Thank you very much.